a flash steam boiler is a really interesting and exciting thing, but I hadn't even heard of them a month ago. I'm just building a simple one here so I can learn what they can do. Just like other types of boiler, this turns water into steam, and you do that with heat of course, so I'm starting with a firebox. I'm using an old butane gas bottle for that, just because it seems to be the right sort of size. Before you ever cut into one of these gas bottles, do make sure it's empty, okay, or it'll blow up on you. I fill them with water overnight, so the gas is all displaced. I cut the hinges and the latch parts with my CNC plasma cutter, but they're just simple shapes, so you could just use an angle grinder. They go on before the door is completely cut out, so the door stays in the right position when they are fitted. I curved the latch so it would fit snugly round the curve of the door. I'm going to burn small logs in here, so that's why I'm making a vertical firebox. If you were planning to use a gas torch to heat your water, then you might prefer a horizontal flame, and so a horizontal boiler. Anyway, I'm doing it this way, and we'll see if it works. It's all just an experiment. Right then, that's the door working, but what about the air intake? I'm going for a pipe set into the bottom. This way, I hope I could control the air going in if necessary, and still have access to the ash when I need to clean it out. Remember, I'm not trying to make a stove for the sitting room here. If I was, I'd need to make it much more airtight than this, because Heating stoves need to be closed down tight sometimes, as you know. I don't expect I'll ever want to shut this one down tight. Mostly, it'll be roaring away. That's the plan. As you know, a conventional steam boiler has a tank of water that you heat up till it's boiling. The water wants to turn to steam in there, but there's only room for some to do that, so the pressure builds up inside. When you open a small valve, the steam rushes out, and you can use that to drive an engine or whatever. It's a pretty good system because not much of the heat energy is wasted because it's stored in the boiler in the form of very hot water, and it's ready to use whenever you are. But the downside is that holding all that pressurized water in is very difficult. Basically, you need a very strong metal box. And if it ever got out in one go, it would be really dangerous. All the water in the boiler would turn to steam in an instant and expand to a couple of thousand times its size. And there would be a big bang. So conventional steam boilers are not just difficult to make strong enough to withstand all that pressure, but they keep corroding away inside, so they need regular checking to make sure they remain strong enough. So that's why I was very interested to learn about a different sort of boiler, the flash steam boiler. It works in a completely different way, and it has some advantages. It uses heat to turn water into steam just the same, but it doesn't store any hot water, and it doesn't store any steam either. That means there's never anything to blow up. The simplest versions are very simple indeed. You just have a coil of pipe, which you heat up, and then you put water in at one end, and hot steam comes out at the other end. That sounds pretty simple. Because you can't store any of this steam, it is released as you make it, so it's either used or wasted. So you can see the disadvantage immediately. If your fire cools, then you won't have any reserves of steam and your engine 
will slow down or stop. That's why train locomotives and traction engines and things like that have conventional pressure boilers because they want a constant reliable rate of steam. But flash steam boilers have been used to run engines in the past and perhaps they could again. Wouldn't it be interesting to find out? So back to my boiler. I'm trying to squeeze a 25 meter coil of copper plumbing tube into the chimney. The chimney is bound to get hot and the plan is that some of the heat will transfer to the tube and then into the water. It makes sense, doesn't it? I know that radiated heat is better in some ways because it's more constant, but I'm hoping to use this convected heat because it's easier. After all, it's all going to go up the chimney. The problem was that the thin copper tube just wanted to kink instead of rolling into a neat circle. So I just couldn't make nice spirals with it. I started off just sort of bundling it up as best as I could, but I decided that was just too messy and would take up too much space. So I started again using a mandrel that I turned on the lathe from a piece of firewood. I had to make a special shaped metal guide to help the tube around the tightest turn as well. But after that, it went okay. <laughs> Slow, but okay. But I couldn't get the spirals very close to each other and the whole thing needed supporting all the time. As it was, it came pretty close to kinking a few times. So it was slow and frustrating. This whole video could have been called Interesting Things I Learned About Thin Copper Tube. But no, it's about the boiler. Will came and helped get all the tube into the chimney, though it didn't want to go in at all. I can't really pull much at all without risking it first. No, I think that's true. Every day that your workshop doesn't have a donkey in it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sandra suggested lubrication, and she was right, it did help. Now you're probably thinking that Tim's going to try to make a steam loco for his railway track. That's really not true. It's just that I learned about these spoilers while I was looking at the possibilities and I had to try it out for myself. All options for the loco are still on the table. Full steam ahead. <laughs> Cold water ahead. <laughs> okay, so you come up that pipe through the non-return valve, all the way down there, and it should come up the end over there. Let's go over here. First we had to check the tube wasn't blocked. Right then Will, water on please. Everywhere. It's that one's leaking and okay. What does it sound? Oh, okay, so there. Oh, that's not even tight, that one anyway. There's our gauge, thumb over the end, water on. Does anything happen? Woo! <laughs> yay! yay! Going straight over two. <laughs> wow, yay! Look at that, we're on to two. two Do it again. Half. Go. Woo! Ah, it's coming out the right finger there. It peaks at two and a half now before it starts blowing. And a half. So that's the pressure of the water. 
and then I welded the chimney onto the top of the stove. And this is a grate for the inside made from an old queen excluder. And here we are yesterday, it was a bit chilly and showery. We ran water through at a rate of half a litre a minute. <laughs> We're making um, sarcastic noises. Oh my god, it's warm. It's hot. <laughs> Shut up. It's f***ing his, Tim. It's almost... Wow! Ow! Yeah. It's already hot. That, to how like many it's almost it? too hot now. It's incredible. It's beginning to boil. It, it's already... How, how long has that been? Oh, two minutes? Something like that. Unbelievable. That is that. <laughs> Exciting. Nice mixture of water and steam. We're almost up to steam already. Okay. Ooh. Now I was amazed at how quickly and effectively the firebox and the heat exchanger worked. We couldn't measure the pressure or the temperature because the gauge melted <laughs> and the pressure needle spun completely round and jammed. But obviously something dramatic was happening inside this boiler and looking at this you might think we made lots of useful steam in no time at all. But I don't think we really did. It's still wet steam, which is on the point of turning back into water and not much use in an engine. But that's only because the steam didn't get hot enough. And I think that's just down to my poor tube design. I'm sure there's plenty of heat available if I could just use it better. I have some ideas for improvements, but I'd love to hear from you too, especially if you happen to know what you're talking about. <laughs> that would be helpful. Okay, talk to you soon.